everybody, welcome back to Recordology. Okay, this show is definitely something different. Over the years, I've been contacted by various companies to do reviews on everything under the sun. Some disturbing stuff, some weird stuff, some great stuff, and I filter all of that out to only the most interesting and applicable products to what it is that we do here at Recordology, or try to. Uh, but one thing that has been fairly consistent is every once in a while I get contacted by one of these companies that are making these mini PCs. Have you ever seen these things, like these little square boxes, and supposedly it's a computer, and they sell for pretty low prices compared to regular computers. And when I say a regular computer, I'm thinking like a laptop, a desktop. Um, you know, I, I went to school with Apple II's and uh, OG Mac computers that were sort of an all-in-one interface. So for me, the idea of uh, even a Chromebook is bizarre, let alone a little mini PC like this. So I've sort of resisted it and I've said politely, no thank you a few times, but I finally said yes. Why did I say yes and how did it turn out? You're not gonna wanna miss this. So I had a PC that I bought maybe four years ago, and it was a laptop, and it's been a pretty poor performer for me. It really hasn't done what I need it to do. And uh, some of the things I do, obviously I do office application work and stuff like that, I do graphic design work. My wife does most of our graphic design, almost all of it, but every once in a while I need to fiddle with that kind of stuff. Her computer is more advanced and much better performer than mine. Mine is really like the kind of computer that's designed to you know, create PowerPoint files, Word documents, things like that. So when I try to, you know, put on some editing software and do video production on there, especially 4K video production, which we're doing here now in Recordology, it definitely bogs down. It's definitely not designed for that. So I've had to uh, kind of consider what to do, you know, either make an investment in a uh, proper computer that's gonna do the trick, et cetera, et cetera. It's been kind of on the back burner though. It's something I haven't really addressed. I probably need to have addressed it much sooner. I do most of the editing um, on iOS devices. Sometimes I film on iOS devices. Sometimes I shoot on Sony cameras and then import them. Sometimes we shoot on the little, um, the little portable ones with the gimbals and stuff. And it does a really, really good job. But in the back of my mind, I would like to you know, have a functioning video editing capability that's reliable and robust on my computer. So that brings us to today's topic. I agreed to do a video review of a mini PC so I could selfishly see if one of these little guys would do the trick for me as a video editing computer. And from a specification standpoint, which I'm putting on the screen right now, you can see that it's pretty decently equipped. The RAM is a bit low, but to put it in perspective, my current computer is still running eight gig of RAM. Yes, that's true. So even 16 gigs is a step in the right direction. And I know that that's still, you know, really, really low, especially when you're, you're editing large 4K video files. Anyhow, the processor, I've never had an AMD processor before. I've always been Intel all the way. Uh, the one I've got now is like an 11th gen i3, which is not good enough for video editing. Here was my reasoning on the processor when I got this i3 chip. I looked at the processing speed of this dual core i3 processor, and I compared it to an i7 that I had on a computer a few years ago. And that was an older, earlier gen, I think it was like fourth or fifth, maybe sixth gen i7 chip. And the specs of the older i7 equated to the specs of the newer i3. So I thought, hey, that one worked really well for video editing. This one not it worked very well for video editing. Well, this was quad core, this is dual core. That was one of the problems, but that, that sort of logical thought process does not work. <laughs> so what I decided to do was give this AMD chip a try. And from a specification standpoint, it looks pretty dang good. So let's go back to a few weeks ago now where I unbox this and we'll go from there.
All right, it's the first time I've ever agreed to review a computer. <laughs> but I've got a use case for this and I wanted to try it out. Plus, obviously a computer can be a great piece of a hi-fi setup. Panova series, got this cool gaming logo, very Transformers-esque, says mini PC. There's a warning label. It's a heavy cube on the back. It's got a product uh, chart that shows how it's specced out. This one is black. This has 16 gigs of RAM and 512 gig hard drive. And it's got barcodes and and things of that nature. Mini PC. It feels like it should from a weight standpoint. Now, I don't like shooting videos far in advance, but inevitably this video will be shot at least several days before you're seeing it because it's going to take some time to really evaluate this. The use case that I have is that my personal computer sucks. This one's a little bit more beefy. I know this is still probably child's play compared to uh, to some folks that are building out the machine. My son built out his own computer, which was very, very impressive. So anyway, I'm going to need to test this out. The use case on this is gaming. It's like a gaming PC. There's the manual. <laughs> yeah, it's so bizarre to see a computer. First of all, this size, that's strange to me. Even though we should be used to it, our cell phones are more powerful than the computers we grew up with. If you grew up with a computer, but to see the manual, like, <laughs> it's just weird to me. Okay, so here is the device. We'll look at that in closer detail. Here is the box. This has pretty good reviews. Not perfect, but it's got pretty good reviews. The whole concept of a, a mini PC is interesting to me that, you know, it is obviously doesn't have optical drives, although I don't think computers do that anymore. It doesn't have, you know, a, a keyboard, a mouse, you know, the peripherals, printers. What's a printer, you know? <laughs> it doesn't have a screen. So there is the uh, power supply. I'll go ahead and put that in there for right now. There's a wall mounting bracket or a, a mounting bracket in case you wanted to put it behind your TV or something. There is, I don't know if that's display port or USB or uh, HDMI. That's HDMI. Okay. Um, and then also we've got some little screws and mounting hardware, I believe. Looking in here, we have the power supply. So looks like a, you know, like a laptop power supply would look. Nothing alarming there. And then here is the computer. This thing is about the size of a cheeseburger. It's got some weight to it. It's not like super heavy, but it feels, you know, like it should. It's got the type of plastic wrap that you see on higher end devices these days when you buy a laptop. It's very intentionally wrapped. Um, okay, so let's uh, start with the overall heft to it. It is a plastic construction, a very nice textured sort of modern gaming aesthetic going on here. I do love the uh, AMD Ryzen and Radeon uh, graphic stickers on here. Very, very cool. Obviously, I'm going to share the specs with you on this, but mostly I'm curious how it's going to perform in the real world. For me, it will be you know normal PC tasks and video editing, specifically um, 4K video editing. We've got ventilation along the sides. Excellent performance, it says on there, so I'm glad to see that. On the bottom, we've got a uh, fan opening, I believe. A couple regulatory stuff. It's branded as Kum... Cam Rui Mini PC Model E3B, 16 gig of RAM, 512 gig hard drive. And again, it does have that AMD processor on it. Um, and then looking on the back panel here, we've got two USB jacks, USB-A jacks, one Type-C uh, power button, and an audio jack. On the flip side here, uh, we've got a piece of a sticker here that says kindly note for faster setup avoid LAN initially connecting might trigger long updates delaying desktop access etc we've got the DC power supply we've got four more USB a slots a DP display port and an HDMI port as well I don't know if there's anything under this yellow sticker Yes, there is. I ran a bunch of performance tests on this device and everything looked like it was performing phenomenally. It looked like it was gonna be a really good option. So I put on some editing software, I connected it to a network and I kind of just slowly started using it 
in parallel with my old machine. I didn't move everything over to this. I wanted this to be a standalone workhorse for editing with all the resources used for editing. I know that the hard drive size, 512 gigs, isn't that big anymore. So I wasn't too concerned about that because if I'm doing one project at a time, it'll probably all fit in there. And I'm talking about you know larger projects than just single recordology shows. But uh, I've also got external hard drives and things that are a terabyte, two terabyte, whatever. So storage is cheap, usually speaking, so I'm not concerned about that as much. I really wanted to make sure that its processing power and memory was adequate for the task. So I put on some video editing software, I loaded some footage on there, and I wanted to see how it handled that. But before I did that, I just tried to do some regular browsing and using the computer. Because on my existing laptop that doesn't do so good, you know, you could notice some lag and things would take too long to load and you could realize that this computer really needed to, <laughs> to be upgraded. So I'm really trying to do that with this new device. And right away, without even doing a side-by-side, -side, just, you know, my memory and experience of living on the old computer for so long, I instantly could tell that this new one was so much faster. It was like night and day. I mean, stuff instantly opens as it should. Uh, there was no... There was no lag. There was no nothing going on from a performance standpoint. I'm going to show you some screenshots here. Everything looked like it should. Everything seems like, you know, you want it to look in terms of performance utilization and uh, resource allocation. It just, and I didn't do anything special to this computer to soup it up or to do anything or to add any, you know, performance software, optimization software. It was just out of the box. It just seems to really, really do a good job. Um, then I got to wondering about the licensing for the copy of Windows 11 on there. Um, did a little check and it turns out it's a group license. So I am not sure the details of how that works, group licensing versus individual licensing on the Windows copy, but it does come with some copy of Windows. I did not uh, do anything beyond that point, you know, so I'm not sure what support is going to look like here. I am, you know, I have no idea how that works. So, uh, but just from the standpoint of a user, I'm so far thinking that this thing is really going to do a good job. So I tried a couple of things. I tried using it for a few days, turning it on and off at night, um, and I used it for a few days, leaving it on, letting it go to hibernate, letting it sleep, bringing it up from sleep, and so far it just seems to really, really do a good job. There was one morning, I think it was the second or third day, I came in, I think it had uh, gone to sleep that night. I came in and the computer itself was making a sound. It was like a, almost like a click kind of a sound. It's a funny squeaky sound. You couldn't hear a dump truck driving through a nitroglycerin plant. Shh. I rebooted it and it hasn't happened since. I have no idea if that was just normal computer activity, if that was a problem, if that was normal, I have no idea. Hasn't done it since, it's been many weeks since, or several weeks I should say, since that happened. Um, it doesn't run hot, it's uh, cool to the touch. It feels like a quality device. Um, you know, it does have a plastic cover on the outside, but I like the texture. This is obviously geared towards gaming. I am not a PC gamer. I've played many PC games, but I'm not a PC gamer. <laughs> uh, I like the small footprint. It's very, very cool. Obviously, how do they do that? You know, you provide the monitor, you provide the peripherals, and it's just the core computer itself in a little box. I think that's really smart. I love the fact that they give you more USB connections than you will need. Various types, USB-A, USB-C. I don't think there was a USB-B on there. I'll show you pictures of the front and back panel. I probably already have at this point. But it really seemed to have all the connectivity. The Bluetooth worked really good. I tested that out as well. So I think that, you know, for somebody who wants an affordable computer, that this might be a really good option. The only caveat that I can possibly think of is longevity because I don't know how long it's going to last. I've had it for a few weeks and it's worked really well during that time. What's it gonna be like in a year or two? Is it still gonna be working? Is it, is it capable of living in an on state for that long? Is anything gonna blow out? You just don't know. So I can't say with certainty how it's gonna perform in terms of longevity and durability. But everything I've seen so far is positive. I really do like it. So anyway, that's it. My first computer review. I hope I lived up to the challenge there. 
I will continue to use it. I absolutely will. I think it's a fun device. It works well. It seems like it's well thought out, well put together. They also have some sort of discount going on. I believe October 7th starts some sort of discount thing. So I'll go ahead and put some details in the description and or the pinned comment. You can check that out. But my friends, that's going to do it for today. Happy record hunting. Happy computer hunting. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.